Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our continuing Shadowlands coverage. We just got a brand new uh, look at the Bastion and Kyrian uh, Covenant update. This was a blog post that was literally just posted uh, by Blizzard mere moments ago. And I thought that we would jump in and look at this together. Uh, and I want to I want to talk about this. This is the 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 one that I personally will be going on my main. Uh, I'm playing a paladin. I already know this is this is the, the guys I want. So uh, without further ado, Let's jump in to the Bastion and Kyrian Covenant update. Like I said, this was just posted, so let's jump into it. When Sylvanas Windrunner pierces the veil between life and death, you and your allies are pulled into the Maw, where the most wicked are damned to suffer for eternity. Yet Azeroth's champions are able to escape and soon make their way to the noble Kyrian in Bastion. Long has it been since a soul has been sent to their gleaming realm, and the locals are astonished by the arrival of a living mortal. However, it quickly becomes apparent that underneath Bastion's glistening veneer lies unrest. The Kyrian's anima, the soul-born essence that fuels their eternity of service, is on the verge of being completely depleted. Before you can help them and make them take your warnings of Sylvanas and the horrible truth of the Maw seriously, you must prove your worthiness as an aspirant and overcome all trials to earn your Kyrian wings by ascending. Unsure if you have truly moved on from the world of the living, we understand that this new reality may be difficult to accept. You are not the first, nor will you be the last, to question the nature of your own existence. Your first stop in Bastion is the Vestibule of Eternity. Akin to other Kyrian sites, this pristine sanctuary is patrolled by anima-fueled centurions and is kept clean and shining by the diligent stewards, which, by the way, are the roly-poly oly owls, and they are the cutest things in the world, and I really hope that they are a boomkin form at some point, because I, I just want to... <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, who scrub each cobblestone by hand until it has a polish that only feathered elbow grease can achieve. It is here that you begin your ascension training, purifying your soul through ritual cleansing by shedding the flaws of mortality. Listen to the soothing chimes of floating bells as you wash away the dust of life in sacred pools. As you prepare for ascendance, you will journey deeper into the resplendent fields of Bastion, your opportunity to demonstrate your value to the Kyrian. Can we look at how beautiful, just like the, the shading of the, the blue and the purple, uh, it really, really looks pristine. Like, absolutely incredible, incredibly beautiful. The plant life that they actually have in these zones looks really, really good. So, uh, it looks like we will all, all of us, Horde Alliance, everybody, will arrive, uh, in Bastion, uh, first. On your, on your first main character, I believe you're on rails. You have to do the zone that they tell you to do. Um, and it looks like in this situation, we get there, we go right to the Kyrians, right to Bastion, uh, and tell them what's going on. So, however we escape the mob. Whatever ends up happening there, when we're pulled into the Maw, and the uh, you know, and we are able to get out, um, my guess is is it's something to do with the Arbiter, uh, something to do with the Kyrians. They pull us out, so that's why we we get to see them first, uh, and it makes sense, right? Because they are like the they are like the uh, angelic rulers. It feels like of the Shadowlands, home of the pure. Brash, ba, ba, Brashin? Bastion is brought to life by its inhabitants, and if you wish to untangle the Banshee Queen's nefarious plans, you'll need to earn an alliance with them. Meet the denizens of Bastion. So first, of course, we have the Kyrians themselves, the noble inhabitants of Bastion who shepherd the souls of the dead to Ouroboros, so that they can be judged by the impassive Arbiter before being sent to their final destination. Fresh arrivals to Bastion will become Kyrian aspirants, wingless beings who train for eons to one day earn their wings and join the ranks of the Ascended, which is... Our goal in Bastion is is to become ascended. Uh, apparently, uh, I also just love the the look of these guys. Um, they're obviously super humanoid, right? Uh, so are they also? They ex they've the Shadowlands have existed before Titans, right? It's, is it's interesting to me that the Kyrians look like the Titans, right? In that similar kind of uh, bluish hue that they have uh, it might not be anything maybe it, we'll find out right uh stewards born of the magic of death oh look at 
look how cute they are. Uh, <laughs> these otherworldly groundskeepers and artificers keep Bastion pristine. Along with maintaining the realm, they assemble centurions, the anima-fueled guardians that train Kyrian aspirants and defend Bastion. Each steward dotes on a paragon and keeps the mementos of their achievements. Perhaps you will catch their eye and they'll pledge themselves to you. So that is probably uh, some of our, you know, uh, the soul binds that are in effect in or one of the systems in Shadowlands. I'm assuming that one of the stewards is going to be a soul bind for us, as well as one of the Kyrian uh, aspirants, the ones that guys, the ones that don't have wings yet. All right, and then we have the Forsworn. Rarely an aspirant will fail to complete a rite of passage. These once bright souls darken and become lost, wandering the plains of Bastion to lament. Containing the Forsworn is key. But if left unchecked, doubt can spread like a disease. Look at them, man. Look at their wings. They look amazing. Next, we have the Centurions, which are built by the Stewards, a legion of anima-filled anima automatons that drill Kyrian aspirants in meditative combat, as well as defend Bastion. Praetors. So there's two, uh, three different kinds. There's the Praetors. Their flying automatons are charged with training aspirants who show particular martial prowess. The Goliath, which has unyielding bulwarks and powerful warriors that enforce order in Bastion. And the Colossus, which are eternal protectors. These guardians have stood watch and defended Bastion for ages. I'm guessing these are the Colossus? They look very, very large. And last but not least, we have the Memories. As the Kyrians shed the burdens of their past lives, physical manifestations of their tormented thoughts are expelled from their bodies. Only by striking them down can the Kyrian cleanse themselves and achieve ascendance. So I'm guessing we're going to be fighting some Forsworn, some Centurions that, you know, get go go wrong. Something goes wrong with them. And Memories, which, I mean, they look really cool. You can actually kind of see, maybe you can't in the video, but it almost looks like they have, like, these little tiny legs. They skipped leg day, bruh. Anyways, um, these are a few... Are, these are but a few of the entities you'll encounter in Bastion. While adventuring, it's best to stay vigilant. You might even cross paths with Uther the Lightbringer and other long-past heroes of Azeroth who now wander the world. I cannot wait uh, to, to see Uther again, which reminds me, one of the first things that I definitely am going to want to do in the alpha when it comes out, which, by the way, uh, don't worry, there will be so many videos, you don't even, you don't even know. Um, I want to see what's going on at Uther's tomb. I, I need to. I don't know if... I. I feel like something's going to be going on there. And maybe not yet. Maybe it's like a future patch. But the fact that we're going to see Uther, they're telling us we're going to see Uther, and other long-past heroes of Azeroth who now wander the world. So, actually, that's a, a big question for you guys. Um, I'm curious, who do you think we'll be seeing in Bastion? So, we know Uther, but is there anybody else that's like a, a protector of the light that's passed uh, that potentially we are going to see? I'm assuming... Uh, that we'll see, you know, Tyrion, Tyrion Forgering. I'm assuming we'll see him. Uh, I'm not sure. Potentially, Varian would be here. I don't. I don't know if he would be considered of the light. Maybe there's another how, a place that he would belong in. Um, but I, I, I want to see. I want to see more. Imagine an ascended Varian. What? That'd be sweet. And is Uther ascended at this point in time? Uh, all right, so let's jump into the Kyrian Covenants. Uh, when players reach maximum level and have explored the first four zones, they'll be able to pledge themselves to a covenant, like the Kyrian. Each covenant offers its champions abilities, along with other powers and cosmetic rewards that can be unlocked through a covenant campaign, an epic storyline unique to the faction, and other activities over time. This alliance also gives the players access to a co covenant sanctum, a city only open to players who have forged a pact with its rulers. I think that th this expansion might have the most replayability for me because I want to experience all of the different uh, covenants. It's like the class order halls in Legion, right? I wanted to experience all of the class the class order halls. Uh, I'm super down for this. I, I'm really, really excited. I actually forgot um, that we would have covenant sanctums, cities that are exclusive for you. So we have the big capital city of Oribus. And then we also have these these smaller cities for the covenant that you and everybody that you see in the area has chosen. So um, that's pretty neat to me. So expect to see a lot of paladins and priests and stuff in, in Bastion. Uh, power of the Kyrian. If you choose to join the Kyrian Covenant, you'll gain two unique abilities. One class ability you used in combat. We actually went over this in uh, one of my other videos 
uh, that should be in a playlist at some point and you can, you can check it out if you haven't already, but that was the blog post where we went over all of the, uh, covenant abilities, um, as they stand right now, this is the same, um, summon steward, call your steward to bring you a file of serenity. So we do have, we do have the owl boy, the owl boy will be joining us, uh, which is awesome. A file of serenity that can be consumed to restore some of your health and remove basically anything. Your steward additionally offers access to a selection of useful amenities each once per day. We don't really know what that is yet, uh, but they do have the the blog post captured he, or uh, posted here. So, um, I, 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 out of all of the other ones, this sounds maybe the most. Uh, all the other ones are something about movement speed or traversing or something. This feels less uh, speedy, less traversal, and more uh, consuming, I guess, is a way to describe that. All right. Uh, and now we get into the, the soul binding, which I cannot wait to see what this means uh, and who we can soul bind with. When you join a covenant, you'll be able to undergo an ancient rite to bind your, your soul... Hiccup, excuse me. Uh, bind your soul to some of its most powerful members. By doing so, your character harnesses their power, gaining access to powerful bonuses. Over time, you can unlock new tiers of power and even switch soul binds when strategy demands it. So you will be able to switch soul binds. The way they say that, though, I am very curious about what's going to end up happening uh, for switching covenants. Um, cool that you can switch soul binds super easily. You can just I think it's built into the... Uh, there's a UI for it. I believe we've actually seen it. Uh, Kyrian Covenant spoils. For your contributions to the Kyrian Covenant's cause, you'll be rewarded with several cosmetic rewards, including a mount, a pet, Kyrian Forged Armor, and back attachments that rival the beauty of Kyrian Wings. So we don't get Ascendant. Don, especially crafted armor forged in the heart of Bastion. So right here, we end up having the leather set. Uh, this in the middle here is, of course, the plate set. And right here, we end up having the uh, the cloth set. So no mail yet, as far as we've seen. Um, what do I think about these so far? So I really like the plate, uh, and I actually really like the cloth. Although I think the cloth is maybe a little too reminiscent of the Eternal Travelers, something that you can already get from the quest if you pre-ordered Shadowlands. Um, and I, I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the leather one um although the shoulders kind of remind me there's another tier set that has those and they they have like these little wisps that come out of here um so maybe maybe in game with the the effects of the armor uh maybe it'll be a little nicer um the helmet though it feels very very weird to me um if i was playing a a rogue or something and you know um but i don't know if you can tell but there's like these like almost Kind of reminds me of like uh, Atlantean armor, right? With like these these like gills or not gills, uh, fins sticking out over here, the claws on the boots. Uh, of course, we don't know what the boots are for this because they used a troll. Uh, disgusting, by the way. Um, but they used a troll, so we don't really know what those boots look like. The cloth set does look good. Um, it just looks very priesty. So if you're a warlock or a uh, a mage, you know maybe you won't like that mog as much. There are some, there are some, there are more, <laughs> there are more mysteries yet to unravel in Bastion, and not all as it seems. A shadowy force threatens the peace in this realm. Perhaps some of Azeroth's greatest heroes can champion the cause of the Kyrian and drive back their adversaries. All right, so uh, next we're going to be looking at the Necrotic Wake dungeon and the stories that, it, uh, the story of the dungeon. So this is the first dungeon that will be available when alpha launches for those that don't know alpha does launch this week um and uh, we have the bastion zone with the kyrians we get to explore that zone that'll be the first one available and the first five-man dungeon that we have for testing is necrotic wake this is a leveling dungeon as well and obviously will be a uh a, a mythic oh a dungeon uh, end game and all that jazz uh but this is a leveling dungeon you can actually see this big like ziggurat uh, that we've seen so many times in Northrend and whatnot, like right in the land of Bastion, because they are the f under attack by Maldraxxus. The forces of Maldraxxus have invaded Bastion. Thirsty for anima, these monstrosities have ransacked the Temple of Courage. Heroes must thwart these invaders, lest their parad paradisical uh, place crumbles. I don't know if that was supposed to say palace. 
place. I think it was just supposed to say place. Um, the Temple of Courage. So the actual dungeon is called Necrotic Wake, but it takes place in the Temple of Courage. Uh, normal, heroic, mythic, of course. Uh, starts at level 50. That is the level that you begin Shadowlands. Um, you begin it at level 50. It's one of four level up dungeons that we get. The first boss is Blightbone. The corpulent mass of rotting flesh known as Blightbone was lovingly stitched together by Surgeon Stitch Flesh to lead the vanguard of the assault upon the Temple of Courage. Amarth the Reanimator. Amarth is the powerful, sadistic leader of the necromancers of Zolramis. He oversees the harvesting of corpses from atop his flying mount, the undead monstrosity Bonefang. So uh, a, a double boss there. Surgeon Stitch Flesh, the guy that made Blightbone. Surgeon Stitch Flesh is the mastermind behind the grisly abominations that are deployed from the floating fortress of Zolramis, which I'm guessing this is Zolramis. Um, and this right here is actually probably Surgeon, uh, that's probably uh, Amarth the Reanimator, right? And this is Blightbone? That might actually be, that might actually be it, um, potentially. He bends to his task with maniacal fervor. Uh, crafting the flesh of fallen enemies into undead amalgamations to be used in Maldraxxus's wars in the Shadowlands. Nalthor the Rhymebender. As a commander of the House of Rituals, the conniving Nalthor the Rhymebender leads the attacks upon the unwitting Kyrian forces. Uh, so this is the final boss, a commander of the House of Rituals. Hmm. So Maldraxxus is attacking Bastion, but I believe... As, so, Commander of the House of Rituals. So, Nathor is part of Maldraxxus. Now, what I think is super interesting about the story that we're going to see is we start in Bastion. They, the first dungeon that we even do of them, they're getting attacked by the forces of Maldraxxus. For those that don't know, the Necrolords, their zone, where they're from, is Maldraxxus. They are necrotic soldiers who wage war throughout the cosmos. In the Skull and Bone Laboratories of Maldraxxus, strength is rewarded and weakness cast aside. Necromancers experiment on the souls of the ambitious and contentious, reforming only the greatest into undead soldiers who protect the Shadowlands. Those who are determined to rise to power, the less promising become fuel for Maldraxxus's malign weapons. So I'm guessing that uh, potentially the guys that attack Bastion aren't the same... They're not the Necrolords, the Covenant that we team up with uh, in Maldraxxus. I'm assuming that maybe, you know, maybe we'll see the story of Maldraxxus. They're they're having a, a, a war in and of themselves, right? A, a civil war of some kind. Um, it is it is strange to me that uh, they do end up attacking Bastion, right? I feel like it's got to be it's got to be someone different, or maybe that's the story. Is you have to pick a side in the war? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, so this is on the actual, uh, website. This has been here for a while. So if you wanted to look at the Kyrian, uh, guys, you can, um, but we kind of already saw a little bit more of that. So I thought I would just go ahead and show this screenshot, uh, and how beautiful this place actually looks. I cannot wait, cannot wait to explore this, uh, hopefully tomorrow or the next day, uh, which again, I will be doing, uh, the videos for that. So, uh, all right, so that is an overlook at what we have uh, coming up in Bastion. It's actually super cool of Blizzard to post this for us because now we know what to expect. Uh, as soon as the alpha launches, people are going to be exploring Bastion. They're going to be doing this dungeon. I'm going to be tanking this dungeon. Um, uh, I'm very, very curious to see not so much the the story of, of Bastion because we'll get that over time and, and, you know, that's something to savor when the game actually comes out. Um, but just exploring it and seeing the denizens of it, what type of things we'll be fighting, and how how are we fighting them, and you know how do these boss fights end up working? Do we get anything that's like super unique in these? Uh, anytime they do a new dungeon, I'm always excited to see what it looks like. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching the overlook of uh, the overview of uh, of Bastion and the Kyrian Covenant that Blizzard just posted. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know there's a lot of videos coming out right now, um, but that's. The way the cookie crumbles when it's when it's uh, when it's alpha season. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, never give up, never surrender. I will be streaming all of my exploration of Bastion over on twitch.tv slash mistledine online. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there. Thank you for watching. Never give up, never surrender. I'll see you in Shadowlands.